हाय एवरीवन जय हिंद जय भारत जय माता दी एज अ चीफ इंजीनियर सेल्ड एंड आई थॉट कि मेरे सर्किट डायग्राम मुझे अच्छे से आता है बट टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट व्हेन ऑरविन सिंह सर क्रिएटेड दिस हाउ टू रीड इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट डायग्राम पैकेज देयर वाज दिस वन वीडियो इन द पैकेज व्हिच वाज ऑल सर्किट रीडिंग रूल्स दिस इज अ सैंपल व्हिच यू नीड टू वॉच एंड यू विल रियलाइज कि देयर इज सो मच टू रीड अंडरस्टैंड इन हाइड्रोलिक सर्किट डायग्राम्स एंड इफ एट ऑल यू आर अ ईटी और अ सेकंड ईयर और थर्ड ईयर फोर्थ इंजीनियर एंड इवन अ जूनियर इंजीनियर By this package, start learning right now. Go on ship as an asset because आज भी झाट पे इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग बहुत अच्छे से नहीं आती इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट डायग्राम पढ़ना अच्छे से नहीं आता दिस इज मेड फॉर यू एंड अगर अच्छा लगा गो हेड एंड बाय द पैकेज इन्वेस्ट ऑन योर सेल्फ द लिंक ऑफ द पैकेज इज इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एज वेल इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक सो फ्रॉम दिस मॉडल ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सर्किट डायग्राम्स दैट आर एक्चुअली देयर ऑन शिप्स सो इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दिस डायग्राम इज टेकन फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द शिप मैनुअल and this diagram is sanitary pump now uh, in this module we'll start we'll be starting off with few rules that will be helpful uh, when we study the circuits later on so let's begin now first of all let me just slightly zoom in here okay now you can see the components here you may remember the number now like this is 52 so what can this be so the first component that we encounter is 52 which is nothing but mccb so i can write here mccb molded k circuit breaker number 52 and it is also called isolator because this is help uh, helpful in isolating the supply to the rest of the circuit here now what you are seeing in front of you is what is there inside the starter panel starting off from the power input from this side three cable ryb or rst three phases entering the mccb and then going further now next you will encounter a contactor and then we have what ocr or current relay and finally the cable moves out of the panel and it goes to the motor so this is what is the motor so what we see here is the whole thing this is called power circuit because this is the circuit that is delivering power to the motor now what is left left in this diagram apart from power circuit is called control circuit so for example the remaining portion here is the control circuit now what is control circuit doing well the the job of control circuit here is to start stop the motor using this contactor so ultimately the whole of this control circuit here it basically controls contactor 88 so this contactor 88 must have some control in the in the control circuit yes so this is that control as you can see the numbers here this is also 88 this is also 88 so basically what it means is when this coil energizes it produces some electromagnetism so it becomes electromagnet and because of that magnetism it will close this switch here and power will go to motor so normally Uh, we will keep the mcb switched on and then power will be waiting at the input of the 88 and whenever the 88 is energized coil 88 is energized power will be moved to the motor so that's why it's called power circuit and here since this is used for control this is called control circuit and here it's called power circuit fine there are few more rules that we need to study before going further now if we see here the loads in the system this is the load a very big one that is motor this is yellow lamp which is indicating that power is on here is a green lamp which indicates that the motor is running and here is the coil 88 contactor coil 88 so you observe that all these are falling in a line and falling to the right side of the circuit so these are you can see coming in one line 
So normally it is like this. Not always, but yes. Normally, the loads in the system will be drawn to one side of the circuit so that you can easily identify them. Where are they? So all of these circles are load here. The motor is an inductive load. Then we have these lamps, resistive loads, and then conductor coil is again inductive load. What is left apart from these is nothing but cables and switches. For example, this is a switch. This is a switch. This is a switch. Both of these are switches. Here also switch, switch. Now a few more additional things are there, let's say transformer. I can't call that a switch. And here, this is an OCR heating element. So again, not a switch. And what is left apart from that are fuses. So most of it are switches only. If you see, count them. Few other elements, we can discuss them in details later on. But normally the circuits are full of switches. So some are three phase, like for example, this one here is a three phase switch, here also three phase. In control circuit, since control circuit is all single phase, so it will be all single phase switches. Okay, let's discuss few more rules here. So first rule that you, you might have understood by now is this the loads shown here. The rest are switches. Uh, if we look at the control circuit in detail, in the control circuit, it's like a ladder diagram. For example, these two are two potential in the control circuit. And we can call these are two rails or two bus here. this and this or two bus, they are having different potential. Let's say this one V1 and here V2. Now what we do here is we make a ladder logic. So we do, uh, join them through these rungs. You can see or you can say steps here like this. So these are steps or rungs. These are rungs. And this whole thing in the control circuit is called ladder, ladder logic. Okay, it looks like ladder to me. Now, you will notice that each rung will have one load in it. And only one load, not many, not more. You don't see two circles in series because that way you're dividing the potential. So normally, loads are always put parallel to each other, never in series, very, very, very rarely in series. So always in, you can say mostly in parallel and not two loads will be in series. Uh, means the other, they'll divide the potential. Also, one more important thing is that you will not find any rung or any step without any load. For example, if I create this, one rung here and I forget to put any load in between, then it's a short circuit situation. So a circle has to be there. Circle has to be there. Otherwise, two potentials cannot meet without a load in between. That will be kind of a short circuit. Okay. So now, if we uh, see the switches, then there is no end to number of switches that you put. You can put 10 switches in series. It doesn't matter. Because switches are nothing but either a straight line or it's an open circuit from there. So it is not a load at all. These switches are not a, not a load at all. So that's why you can put multiple in the same line or in series. And there is no fixed location. You can put them anywhere you feel like. Only thing is that you will need to be careful where you are putting the loads. Okay, all right. So that's how we draw the circuit. So a power circuit on the top, power, 
Then remaining is control. Control is looking like a ladder logic with rails, different potential, and then runs. All right. Few more things that we can notice here is that the circuit is divided in some kind of Cartesian matrix. I uh, just zoom out and show you. If you see, this is A section, and that's B. It's a B section or B row, and then C here, like that. Similarly, if you look at the top number one and then number two column, then number three and number four column, like that. So this way, we are dividing the circuit in different sections. For example, you want to locate this fuse. Then you can simply say it's B2. Location is B2. However, this is a very small circuit. It's one just one page and that to very small circuit. So these are means uh, we can easily identify the, the parts are. But imagine if it's a big circuit, a big diagram, then it will be difficult to locate certain items. So that way this Cartesian matrix uh, will help you identify the location of the part. All right, then we have got the diagram num page numbers and this circuit numbers and all. So that information we can get from here. Okay, furthermore, okay, as we go in, in future, we will see few more rules as per uh, circuits. So case to case basis, we'll keep on learning the rules. All right. Now that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one where we go in details about the working of this circuit. See you.